your ability to focus, and in fact, your ability of neurons to encode specific information in your environment, that is to represent what's out there in the world, is actually related to your blood glucose level. Now, here I'm setting aside the discussion of ketosis and, and ketogenic diets for the moment. However, many people who practice intermittent fasting, and I should say I practice a sort of pseudo intermittent fasting. I generally eat my meals between the hours of 11 a.m. and 8 p.m., although sometimes there's some wiggle around that. Occasionally I have an early breakfast, but I know there are a number of people who are doing longer fasts or they're eating in a six hour window. It's a convenient way to restrict their calories for other people. That is, it's easier to not eat than to eat a small portion, so they opt for intermittent fasting and so on and so forth. But one of the things that you hear very often is that some people like being fasted because they like the clarity of mind that it provides. Here's the situation. Neurons, unless you're in a ketogenic diet, really thrive on glucose. Well, I should say that provided you're well hydrated enough and you have enough electrolytes in your system, what tends to happen is that when you ingest food, there's a shift in your nervous system towards so-called parasympathetic mode. You probably heard it as rest and digest, although it does other things, a more relaxed mode that can indeed make us very sleepy. If we have too many carbohydrates, it actually can make us quite sleepy. However, if we have any food, if we have enough of it, that is if our gut is full, it diverts blood to our gut and we become sleepy and we can't focus as well. So a lot of people really like fasting in the state of being fasted for focus and concentration because they don't have as much of that parasympathetic activation, they're just not as sleepy. And in fact, under those conditions, half as much caffeine will give you just as much lift as twice as much caffeine will give you on a full belly of pasta. And that's just the way that caffeine interacts with blood glucose. So what I'd like you to imagine is if you had a measure of focus from zero to 10, these are arbitrary units, 10 being maximally focused and zero being not focused at all, where if you're very fasted, you're going to have a high degree of focus and concentration. On one end of the spectrum, blood glucose is relatively low and you're fasted and you can think and behave in a very concentrated way. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have a lot of blood glucose, or I should say sufficient blood glucose. You never want your blood glucose to be too high. And that allows your neurons to encode and perceive and basically allow you to think really clearly. So you sort of have to pick your condition. What do you want? for your bouts of focus and concentration. So what I do is, as I mentioned before, I eat my meal sometime around 11 a.m., my first meal typically, unless I'm very hungry when I wake up. And so I will do my workout. I'll be consuming water with electrolytes, maybe element or other electrolytes, maybe some caffeine as well in the form of yerba mate or coffee. That's my first focus bout of 90 minutes or less. But then again, in the afternoon, I will do another 90 minute bout of focus. And I'll talk about some of the tools I use to make sure that that bout of focus is optimal for getting the most amount of focused work done, whether or not it's mental work or physical work, although I tend to do my physical work early in the day and my mental work both early and late in the day. So one way to manage this is if you're going to have a lunch to make sure that you don't stuff yourself at lunch, that you're not overeating and to not get quite so full that you push your nervous system into this parasympathetic mode and make it hard to focus in the afternoon. I know a lot of people experience a dip or even a crash in energy in the afternoon that make it really hard to focus. For that reason, I'll just remind people of a tool I've talked about many times before, which is based on the biology of adenosine and caffeine, et cetera, which is to delay your first caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking up. I know that can be painful for certain people. When I'm working out very early in the morning, I'll drink my caffeine before my workout, which often occurs within you know 30 to 60 minutes of waking. That is to respond with electrical activity in the optimal way when you're reading something or when you're trying to perform exercise. I, in fact, as I just described, incorporate both fasted states and fed states in order to optimize my concentration and focus.